Welcome to Igora vs. Headlines. I am your host, Cezare Jurevic. On this program, we tackle the underlying problems in the stories reported by the news media with the best solutions that we have to offer. And by we, we also mean you, our viewers, because by using the Igora networking platform, we all get to participate in the political decision-making process. Today, on our panel, we have with us Lois Jurevic our researcher and reporter. My name's Richard Procida. I'm an author, attorney, and activist. I produce a podcast called The Truth and Democracy Coalition, and I'm the author of a textbook called Global Perspect Social Issues in Global Perspective, Pornography. And I'm looking forward to our discussion. Hi, everyone. I'm Rosemary. I live in Grenada. I'm a former political candidate, and I do have an interest in children and education, specifically as it relates to education, improving the overall well-being of a society. I look forward to our discussion. Hello, everyone. My name is Mladen Pavlov. I have a bachelor's degree in accounting, and I'm a concerned citizen. Thank you for having me. Thank you all for being here. Before we hear today's report, a quick market update. Currently, the number one idea in the world is still an idea for the universal basic income. The number one idea in the United States is still an idea against the Paycheck Fairness Act. And from our last show, the idea for nationalizing the railways is in a 102nd place with three supporters. Without further delay, Lois, what do you have for us? Between 2009 and 2019, depression rates have doubled for teens. Since 2019, eating disorder emergency room admissions have doubled for girls 12 to 17 years old. In 2022, nearly one in three teen girls seriously considered suicide. And a report from the CDC in 2023 showed record high levels of violence, sadness, and suicide risk for teen girls. Many are pointing to increased social media use as a primary cause for these problems. Teens' depression and suicide rates have risen markedly in the same period that social media use has risen. The Kids Online Safety Act, COSA, is a bipartisan bill drafted in an effort to protect kids online. COSA would stop the promotion of online content that's harmful for a minor's mental or physical health and require the creation of mechanisms to protect children from addiction to the online platform. Under the pending legislation, Social media platforms are required to set the strictest privacy settings as the default for users 16 and under and limit the contacts that can connect with minors. COSA would also require the creation of supervision controls that would allow parents to edit the algorithm, restrict geolocation sharing, limit public access to personal data, track or limit the time spent on the platform, limit notifications and autoplay, and delete personal data or the account itself. Platforms which average at least 10 million active users per month would be obligated to issue a yearly public report on measures taken to prevent and mitigate foreseeable risks of harm to minors as judged by a third-party audit. The Kids Online Safety Act is endorsed by seven organizations and opposed by seven organizations. Those supporting the bill include the American Psychological Association, the Digital Progress Institute, and the Internet Accountability Project. They cite concerns of increased bullying, body image issues, changes in structural brain development associated with social media use, and more. Those against the bill include the Electronic Frontier Foundation, the Center for Technology and Democracy, and the American Civil Liberties Union. They cite concerns of privacy from parents, youth access of end-to-end -end encryption technology, and identifying content that promotes harm versus content that is necessary education. The Federal Trade Commission and the State Attorneys General would enforce the Kids Online Safety Act. 
Some are concerned that attorneys general would make political points on what constitutes harm to children. COSA includes a study to be done on the accessibility and accountability of age verification systems and how such a system could be implemented which minimizes data collection and maximizes data security. Previous courts ruled that age verification systems violate the First Amendment, which allows both minors and adults to access lawful information anonymously or pseudonymously. The Kids Online Safety Act failed to pass in 2022, in part because of competing legislation that would strengthen privacy protection for both adults and minors, and because of lobbyists working on behalf of big tech companies, as reported by Sarah Dorn in Forbes magazine. After modifications to the bill, senators from both major parties are again pushing to get this legislation passed this year. And again, lobbyists from major tech companies are working on the current legislation, according to Open Secrets. Cesare, back to you. Lois, thank you for that report. Now, let's see what the panel thinks. We do have with us Rosemary, who is a professional educator, and I really first would like to hear from her about the psychology of children. And before we get into like the technical things of, of the legality of, of all of this, um, what, what do kids need? Can you tell us? Can you start us off with that, please? Thank you. And I would say what kids need most of all is the society that cares and listens and primarily uh, the, the persons who are most responsible for that are the parents. And I observe that a lot of help is about allowing parents to monitor uh, kids' use of the internet. What I'd like to say, though, is that this is based on the assumption that parents do care or do care enough. Um, the reality is that there are lots of parents who care in other ways, and it's, it's because of neglect that children are having time on the internet um, in the absence of parents being there. Let, let me illustrate. So a lot of parents care by providing. So they're working long hours, they're away from their children. They may not even have the time to bother to, 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 to know that this bill exists and that they, they're able to you know, restrict their kids. They may not know how to, they may not be tech savvy, but they think they're caring by working and, and being away from children. They also think they're caring by giving kids devices. Personally, I do not think kids need devices. I really don't think they do. Um, I don't think kids should have smartphones. Uh, I don't think kids should have, you know, unrestricted access to devices and that is primarily the parents decision there's no law that says a child must have a tablet or a child must have a smartphone the government did not put that in place it is parents who make that decision to get a device and leave the child with it unsupervised so to assume that giving parents the right to um monitor or or restrict access to certain content online would make them do that is a bit uh, naive. Um, that's what I'd like to say. We have to review the parent-child, you know, relationship. That is a fantastic point. What a great way to start us off, and to start us off with a little bit of humor, because this is really becoming quite, uh, quite hilarious. I want to bring up the universal basic income because everything is, always ends up being related to the universal basic income by empowering the people to actually do the right thing, you know, to help the help the parents provide so that parents are not stuck at these endless jobs so that they have the time to raise their children. If you empower the people, if you empower the parents to be better parents, well, guess what? They raise better children. But okay. I, I, I promise I will try not to bring this up again throughout the rest of the show and so that we can focus on uh, the legality and the whole concept of, of Kids Online Safety Act and the similar measures. Thank you, Cesare. Uh, I just want to mention one of my ideas because uh, our current topic is part of a bigger conversation about how we raise our children. And I have an idea about that in Igora. 
And uh, like uh, Rosemary said, currently the parent has the proactive approach. It, it's we expect from them to do everything. And I think the government should be more involved and hit, take a more proactive role in, in educating the parents how to be better parents and have some control over you know how they raise their children because it, it, uh, it, it's in uh, the interest of the child and the society as a whole you know i think this way we can avoid a lot of issues before they happen in the future when the kids grow up so um uh like louis also another point like louis says big tech big tech opposed uh, some of these changes i think big tech should be on uh, it's possible for us to convince the big tech to be on board with at least some of these changes because it's in their interest to provide safe safe environment for our children online. And if, if let's say the parents uh, uh, decide that some of these platforms like YouTube or Facebook are are dangerous for for our children, they might decide to either forbid the children to use them or or to use the device or even their uh, Actually, I was able to find a couple of apps where you can block certain websites from being opened on your in your browser. So uh, this is one way, for example, you can block YouTube and the, the kids won't be able to use on, on their device. Um, they won't be able to open this website at all. And from this, you know, big tech is going to lose. Okay, so Mladen, you talk about the government playing a more active role in teaching parents how to be better parents. Uh, but I think that could uh, even more so go the other way. I think parents need to control their government more um, so, so that if the government does engage itself in raising children and rearing children, it's actually guided by parents, you know, by, by the collective wisdom of the parents. So again, the, you know, the theme, control your government, right? So we need parents to, to be able to not just raise their children, but also to control their government. Uh, we need to empower parents to do both. Uh, one other point I wanted to add, you know, since you brought up the big tech companies, I just want to say, so in Lois's report, she says that the, that the lobbyists of the big tech companies are, you know, are already working against this bill. And to so many people, this might sound like, oh yeah, it's big money once again, working against the people, right? You know, once again, they're trying to corrupt our system, but that's, not the case because the reason that you hear about the big lob the, the lobbyists of the big companies is because the small companies cannot afford the same lobbying power that the big companies have because if they did have that power then all of or if not all then nearly all of the tech companies would be opposing this bill this bill is terrible um it is basically like the nuclear bomb to to the whole tech industry uh, we need more precision methods. Um, just real quick, you know, just to make an example, we have crime in Chicago. You know, we have all these criminals. We, we have, you know, gangs, uh, organized crime. It's like saying, you know what, we need to get rid of the criminals. So let's just nuke the whole city of Chicago. That's exactly what COSA does. It, you know, it just destroys everyone, you know, while, while it's trying to just attack a few of the few of the actors who are creating these negative trends. It's insane. As far as the bill goes, there may be needs some refinement or tar targeting, but in general, we definitely need regulate to regulate the internet. We are condemned by the profit motive. And that is really the main reason they don't want to spend the money. But at the same time, um, even adults, we need protection from these logarithms that are sending us down rabbit holes of disinformation. And there's also a lot of deceptive um, business practices. I just had a recently, I had registered for a business plan on Zoom and nothing in their description said that I was buying 10 users. They said it was $200 a month. No, it's 24 or $200 a year. And they charged me $200 a month so the real price was $2,400, and I didn't catch it, but PayPal reimbursed me because they saw the deceptive advertising that Zoom used on its pricing page. So the internet is the wild, wild west. It definitely needs regulations to make sure that it serves the public interest, and there may be some dangers. I don't know 
if it's causing depression or all those things that were mentioned. But there certainly are dangers on the internet, and we need, and but the internet also provides us with a lot of information. So I don't think children should be restricted from it, but there's a lot that goes on. I mean, I see, I read these articles about these guys who um, try to groom children over the internet. And it makes me wonder, what the heck are they thinking? What the heck are they doing? Why are they spending their time trying to chase after young girls or young boys on the internet? But I guess apparently it happens. So we do need to regulate the internet. And while this bill may need some refinement, I think the idea is sound. Rich, you do bring up a good point. Uh, we do, actually adults are in many ways just as vulnerable as children. Uh, obviously not in all the ways, that's the difference between children and adults. Uh, but these these tech companies are clever. They, they, they develop, actually one of the things that's addressed in COSA is autoplay. And in turning that off for children, and I'm just thinking, what? Huh? This is, I mean, sure, yeah. Children are vulnerable to that, but so am I, you know? Who's protecting me from autoplay? I mean, there might be a function, but uh, but you know what? I, I kind of miss the days of, and especially when you're trying to conserve your data usage uh, on your mobile device, if you're limited in how much data you have, when you're paying for your bills, when you're a low income, uh, when you're a low, low income adult and you're trying to sa save your money, and you're trying and you're and you're scrolling all of these things are racking up data right so not to mention the the damage that it does psychologically but i actually miss the days that i could you know i could just look at the video read the description be like okay do i want to watch that do i want to click on it engage with it or not but and i mean sure there's probably a way to turn that off but you know what but I'm too addicted to turn it off, you know? Uh, I mean, I'm too distracted, let's just say. I'm too distracted to find the function because I'm actually, I'm still trying to find the video that I want. So anyways, the, the point is that we are all vulnerable and and we do need some kind of regulation. Like you said, who you had raised the question, who's going to control you in using, uh, let's say, YouTube too much. Uh, actually, in China, there is a restriction, for example, for computer games, if you play them, up to let's say two hours and then the computer game turn, turns itself off it doesn't let you use it for more than a certain amount of time so i don't know if that can be applied to uh, let's say youtube yeah so you can have those mechanisms but one topic about for, about which i want to speak from a specific personal experience is how devastating cosa will be uh you know because this this bill it most people when they think about all these dangers of you know of of online stuff for children they're mostly thinking about facebook they're mostly thinking about TikTok and snapchat you know these really big companies but there are thousands if not hundreds of thousands if not millions of much smaller internet services providers that would be devastated by this because this bill is so big uh, I want to use one personal example, which is the Agora platform itself. Uh, after studying this bill, I've been looking at the details of this bill. If you look at it, it will apply to platforms like Agora. Um, and it, see, one thing that's interesting, there's already another bill, Child Online Privacy, Pri uh, Privacy Protection Act. And that, uh, and that it, it pertains to like children 13 and under. But the thing about that is it's regulated by the federal or it's it's administered by the Federal Trade Commission, which relates specifically to businesses. So we have uh, the Child Online Privacy Protection Act. Most service providers are not subject to that because they're not they're not actually engaging in commerce. But if you read the what the COSA says, the Kids Online uh, Safety Act, it is much broader in its scope. It relates to any kind of service provider, not just big businesses. It relates to much smaller entities. It could be like a church, a church organization, you know, just a small community platform. Technically, all of these are, things are subject to that. That requires a lot more technical development for a lot more of these low budget projects. Now, I brought up Igora specifically. So Igora is an educational tool. It's about a way to empower people. And let me tell you, 
children are not abusing it. Children are not addicted to it because they can't stop developing their political philosophy. But guess what? If you read the if you read the language of Kosa, Igora will now be subject to to Kosa. Uh, it now it falls within the boundaries of that. It, it was absolved under the the other the previous law. But so they're greatly expanding the scope of of what can be regulated. And so, what is going to be the result uh, for Igora? What the only thing that we can do is we can. Uh, we can restrict people of uh, under 17, age 17, from using Igora. And that will be devastating. These kids will not have an opportunity. And again, it's not like they're addicted to the platform. It would be wonderful if children were addicted. Like, we don't need restrictions for how much kids use Igora to, to become smarter, more developed uh, uh, thinking citizens. Uh, but now because we're not going to be able to develop these tools to restrict their engagement and whatnot, we're just going to have to bar kids from using it. And that's going to be a big disadvantage. And this COSA does not take into account the smaller actors and the value that they provide and how, and, and how no dam how they, how they create basically no damage to society or to children's mental health. Uh, so I want to stop here. All right. Thank you all for bearing with me. Um, um, good, good point. I I completely agree that um, it's going to put an unnecessary strain on companies that have to come up with safeguard mechanisms, and it would take away from other more productive things that they could be focused on developing. I also wanted to um, highlight the fact that Madden gave an example from China, which is not democracy. A democratic country um and so certain things work for certain people um people who are drawn towards democracy like their freedom they value freedom and they're willing to die for it and also they like being able to choose and they feel like they're um capable of choosing um so there, there are different types of people in the world people want different things um i think that sort of restriction is not in line with democracy. Prime, you know, so for a democratic country to move in that direction and sort of restrict people rather than um, give them the right to choose is sort of undermining democracy in a subtle way. Um, another point I wanted to make was uh, the age verification systems. Like I can't begin to imagine how you'd actually be able to verify someone's age online unless you're asking for like photo ID or something. And I mean, that, that's difficult enough looking at a person in person. Like I can't begin to imagine how an accurate age verification system would work. Not to mention again, the strain it would put on companies to have to come up with such a system and keep it going when you know they could be focused on more productive activities so while i do agree that we need to look into kids well-being absolutely and um, what they do online that could be harmful to them i still think education is important educating parents empowering parents to, to be more present and to be more mindful and of course educating the, the children to make right choices or simply having their parents take away their devices. I mean, if the parents limit the kids' access to devices, we, they wouldn't be on the internet in the first place. So rather than putting limitations on the internet, you can simply educate parents on, you know, how to, to lock away a laptop in a cupboard or something. <laughs> there are, I think there are more simpler solutions to this problem than going through this tedious route of, I think the, the end goal is, is limiting people's freedom online, even if we're starting with children. I, I think that's, that's what's happening in, in a subtle way. Yeah, I'm not really sure how much it would affect Agora. And we definitely need to, these uh, logarithms, they're just about profit. And we live in a highly sexualized society, and it's almost impossible to protect children from that. People talk, I'm TikTok. I mean, almost every other, uh, are a lot of prostitution and, and sexually explicit materials 
are are on TikTok. And, you know, as a man, you know, I'm getting hit on by hookers all the time on Facebook, women trying to, you know, from across the country, trying to marry a man in America or something, you know, um, and those are logarithms. We need to um, regulate them and we need the right to turn them off. And the on the location of children, it's just to sell them things. Let's protect them from excessive marketing and let's protect our private information from um, profiteers trying to use it for their benefit. And it's not restricting speech, it's really protecting us from profiteers and, and people who would try to exploit us and exploit our children. And I think we need the internet and I think children should have access to it because it's a, I mean, I use it all the time. I don't even watch TV anymore. I just use the internet and it, it's school. They need it to do their schoolwork. They need it to do their research. They need it and they're using it all the time. And a lot of classes are over the internet. So it's very important that we have an internet that functions, but functions in the public interest. Um, and that's the, what the government's role is, to make sure that our business practices and um, things in the, and companies serve the public interest. Because otherwise, if they don't serve, if they only serve their, themselves, then they're not, and at the expense of the people and at the expense of our children, then they're, they don't serve the public interest. They have no right to exist in our um, system. Everything has to serve the public interest or else government uh, wouldn't allow it. You know, they wouldn't incorporate unless they felt that, well, profit, making profit is in people's interest and is in the government's interest and having business activity is, but we really need to protect our people and all the disinformation rabbit holes that it sends people down. Everybody just wants to see the media. Even the news is just entertainment selling us what we want to hear, you know? And so we need to make sure that people are exposed to diverse views on the internet and not just siphon down conspiracy theory rabbit holes and that children are protected from predators, whether they're business predators financial predators or sexual predators. We need that protection. And it doesn't restrict democracy. It actually enhances it when our system provides a diversity of views and doesn't lead off into self-satisfying um, types of um, self-indulgence, you know, but actually provides us with information that we need. So in preparation for this show, I, I, I got inspired to develop an idea about regulation of online services. And I actually came up with a, with a few specific solutions um, that I find really interesting. I think any online platform should have the option for you to pay for a subscription-based service to eliminate all advertising. Like you should have that option. It, companies should be forced or, or if they want to make their services free. Okay, great. Make it free. Um, if you want advertising, okay, great. You can have that. You can provide that. But at the same time, for people who do not want to see advertising, I think we should force those companies in order to protect people from all of this. Really, this does become tremendously manipulative. Uh, psychologically on, on, a, on a national, on a, on a big societal scale, um, people should be able to opt out of that and just to pay for it. Um, and, but this is especially for platforms as opposed to just websites, platforms where you where, that have like user created content. But there is one other really important uh, part to this is that I think we should create a specific commission in order to not have these just gigantic solutions, just these atomic nuclear solutions, uh, you know, to solve very specific problems that are caused by very specific large actors. I think we should have something like a Children's Online Safety Commission that would specifically investigate 
different companies one by one, especially in order from biggest impact to the smallest impact, because let's face it, it's really the big companies that are doing the biggest damage. So it, it investigates them one by one. It provides guidelines for how they are to amend their operation. And then they are required to comply with those guidelines within a certain time frame. If they then fail to enact those policies, well, at that point they get fined. Um, but, you know, and yeah, sure, it might start with Facebook or, you know, Twitter or TikTok. But as this commission moves down the line and starts regulating things uh, one by one, everyone else is going to get the message, you know, okay, we have a similar platform here to the other big platform. We have the same business model. Eventually they're going to come after us too. So they're going to know in advance specifically how they need to adjust their services, but they won't be fined. They won't be penalized because they might be providing, sure, there might be certain, uh, there might be a certain cost to using that technology. Of course, there always has to be, you know, they have to make money somehow, right? Uh, to, to stay existing. So there might be certain disadvantages to it, but it might be providing like benefits that greatly out, outweigh those, you know, those, those negatives. So, and a commission would be able to specifically address the value versus the cost that a, that a certain service is providing instead of just hammering these gigantic uh, changes down everyone, you know, on everyone. So, those are the two big changes and 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 frankly uh, just really advertising for children it it's sh maybe that should be one of the things you know if you want children on your platform don't advertise to them maybe that should be like the, one of the golden standards uh cesar you mentioned uh, restricting advertising for uh, both children and adults for children i agree with you we need to restrict that but for adults you think we need uh to protect also the interests of the advertising companies and actually the business who advertise and they need to reach uh, their customers through advertising. So, and not to mention it, even if you live, if you, if the adult pays for, for not having ads for a certain service online, then that's just going to drive uh, the companies to find another way to reach their customers, like sending people door to door, for example, which is also not, not something people would be, would like, I'm assuming most of them. So that was my point. And I also wanted to raise a point about, uh, talk a little bit about uh, restricting uh, potentially dangerous content. For example, I'm a member of a few Facebook groups where before I post something on the on the group, there is an admin who, uh, who uh, reviews what I'm about to post and they have to approve it. So th this is one way to have restricting uh, dangerous or uh, behavior or uh, uh, content that uh, could be dangerous for our children or disinformation for when you talk about adults. So uh, I don't know if the other platforms have, have also this option. I understand that this raises the issue of whether the company is going to have the manpower since anybody can post on a website from all over the world. There's enormous amount of content that is going to get uploaded. I don't know if there are going to be enough people to monitor all this or if there is a way to create an automated system that could detect let's say for uh detect for certain keywords that uh assume that the content is going to be uh harmful in some way Mladen, just to address your point uh, about companies being able to reach potential customers that's their problem uh if i am willing to pay to not see your advertisements uh on with a certain business like Facebook, I just want to use Facebook. I'm a user of Facebook. If I want to pay Facebook and if Facebook is happy taking my money instead of taking the, the money of the advertisers uh, who want to sell me stuff, really, it doesn't matter to Facebook. Facebook just wants money. OK, uh, no fault of their own. I want money, too. Right. But I'm willing to part with my money in order to not see the BS advertisements. So if I'm willing to do that, I should have that option and I should have the option to not have my brain polluted by all of these uh, manipulative tactics by all of the advertisers. So I think Facebook is completely fine. Facebook or any other not to speak for Facebook, but uh, I don't want to get sued by Facebook, but uh, but I think all these other platforms are fine with taking money from whoever, as long as they're willing to give it to them for whatever services they provide. So I understand. I agree with you that Facebook doesn't care how they're going to get their money. I just have an issue with advertising companies not being able to advertise, you know, protecting their their interests, not, not Facebook. And obviously, Facebook doesn't have issues how they're going to get their money as long as they get them.
you know, I just wanted to clarify that. I don't know. But they can advertise. They can advertise to the people who are too cheap to pay Facebook for opting out of the advertisements. Yeah, so, but they'd they be able to advertise to everybody, you know, and significantly limit the people that they're going to be able to reach because it's going to affect negatively their business, you know, reaching yeah, customers. Yeah, but, and, but it negatively affects my business of not seeing BS. I don't want to see it. Yeah, I agree with I'm that willing was... to pay for it. Okay. It's actually what I, what I developed over time is initially I was also was finding the advertising uh, very uh, annoying, but but then I later realized also the value of advertising. And actually, there are some very good ads that you can learn about companies that you were never aware existed and services that actually going to be very useful for you to know about. And also, uh, I, I think it's useful to keep an open mind when it comes to advertising. Like I said, it's going to significantly harm, you know, companies who want to reach customers if you just give the user option to opt out of all advertising. Hey, we, we don't live in a perfect world. There's always going to be friction. There's always going to be efficiency loss. You know, like there are all kinds of business. There could be a business next door about which I don't know. I, I just never see it. I never see their ads. Well, 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 maybe we should have laws against me not paying attention to other. It, it's ridiculous. But I think people should have that option. And I think we do have to look at a, a lot of these big companies. They're making money. These companies, especially the big companies, we should be able to force them to, to see them as a common good, as, as a utility. They, they be essentially become utilities. I think we should be able to force them to give us the option to choose one or, or the other. It's not tremendously restrictive to those companies. If I'm willing to pay for it, they're still going to get paid. They're still going to make money. So I think it's a greater public benefit to force companies to give people the option to opt out of advertisements by paying for it. I, it's just, it's the lesser of two evils. Well, okay. let's, agree. let's agree to disagree. I'm not going to keep arguing with you. Let's move on. Thank you. Well, I, okay. I think going after the offenders rather than like having this umbrella solution um, would be better. Uh, in, in the case of, of social media being used for cyberbullying, especially among teens, um, you know, I think it'll be better for whatever government can do to uh, increase, let's say, the authority's ability to track where content originated. Um, so you can track which device and who actually put it out there and, and have laws in place to penalize that person. I think um, that that'll be a better use of government's time. We had an incident here locally, and I don't even want to elaborate too much on it. But it, it was um, it was about inappropriate content uh, being shared by someone anonymously, someone overseas, and this content was used to blackmail um, a significant person in the public eye. Um, was brought to the authorities attention but because it originated overseas they didn't have the means to um, identify the person who was blackmailing to begin with and who actually released the content so I, I think um, investing in measures to, to be able to track where content comes from uh, you know you know in in the case of harassment where somebody wants to just put content out there or, or hack into to your device and, and get uh, information or images that you may not want released to the public. I think um, government, it, it would be better for government to look into ways to be able to track these uh, offenders and penalize the offenders specifically, rather than try to uh, re restrict their ability to do such things. I mean, at the end of the day, the right and wrong decisions are made by individuals. You know, it's individuals who choose to either help others or harm others. So I think it's 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 wiser to try to just penalize wrongdoing, and hopefully that would deter it. I mean, that's generally how society works. There is a, an addictive nature. There's this case, and this might be a little extreme, but there's the case of Gran Amato, who spent all of his father's retirement, some $275,000 on a cam model. And then when they cut him off, he went down, killed his father, killed his mother, killed his brother, and then took 
right after that, took his brother's ATM card, went to a place with public Wi-Fi, and started talking with the CAM model again. So there is some addictive nature to some of these materials that I think needs to be addressed. And then also, but there is a point that the bad actors, as Rose Marie were talking about, um, some of the biggest media companies in the world are spre spreading recklessly and, inten and intentionally disinformation. Fox News is being sued right now for, for doing that. And so um, all out of a profit motive, all and and these talk radio shows just ginning up, and it's both on the left and the right, ginning up hatred, division, you know, disinformation, lies, extremism. So we've we've got to do something because too many people are looking for that and just want to hear what they want to hear. And it will feed them to extremism. And we need protection from lying, manipulative, and untrustworthy media, especially the big ones. I mean, like Fox News is a big one. And um, so we've had a, different laws in the past that were taken down. The uh, Fairness Doctrine was taken down um, by Reagan. Obviously, the intent is to provide this disinformation to rally the public into a fascist type of situation. So there needs to be regulations on these companies. Um, their products are can be addictive, um, sometimes are immoral and harmful, and sometimes they're just outright lies. And we need to stop that somehow. And one way to do it is to provide more information and provide more control in some sense, like get rid of the logarithms and provide certain information about, hey, this station, this TV network has is not trustworthy. It's not trustworthy source. And let people know that because somebody told me a long, long time ago, we don't need less. What we need is more speech more speech and providing like warning labels and different types of things to tell people, hey, this is what you're getting into might help. And it's actually providing more information to people. So people need to know about these algorithms and what they do and how to turn them off. Yeah, I wanted to talk about what Richard said that we need to battle misinformation. There was an organization, I don't remember the name, but uh, it had volunteers who actually were acting as watchdogs against misinformation. They were reporting, you know, when they see something online that's uh, misinformation, they were able to report it. And then uh, the organization uh, can reach the, the entity that posted this information and then they can do something about it. And uh, for example, also Facebook has an option uh, of any end, end user to report any post that they find on Facebook that they can report on. And this this post can be taken down if, if it's determined that it is, it's misinformation or it's harmful to the viewers and to the users of the platform. So we're almost out of time. And as the representative of a networking platform, an online networking platform who stands to be hurt greatly by this incompetence, just just overbearing law, uh, potential potential law. Um, I want to make a few points. Uh, Rosemary, as you said, we, we have to go after the bad actors, and I agree with you. Uh, actually, we do have to go after the bad actors. Um, but in order to do that, we need laws. And, you know, that's why this bill is proposed, is, you know. Uh, but this bill is too restrictive. So how do we go after bad actors? And I think the solution is to have a commission that is dedicated to investigating the practices and the contributions of each business. And not just business. It's easy to say business. But we're talking about a lot of nonprofit organizations that, are, that can potentially also be affected by all of this. So, so it's really online services providers. Um, so we need good guidelines. But 
those have to take into account. There's just too much. Uh, there's too much ver variety out there to make a simple laws. This is why I think we need a commission that's going to investigate these companies and these organizations uh, based on what they provide and at what cost. That's all the time we have for today. Thank you to all of our panelists and thank you to all of our viewers. Remember, you have the power here to decide which of these solutions are the best. Or maybe you think you have a better solution. Please share it with the rest of us in Igora. Also, if you want to discuss ideas one-on-one, -on -one, we are building a culture of making ourselves available to one another through citizen office hours. See the meetings page in Igora for details. And finally, if you would like to be a guest on the show, please see the video description.